Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Yes. So before we get started, a couple of questions before we um, poll for four questions, I should say. Um, an incredible season for Hendrick Motorsports. Um, I believe 16 wins in the NASCAR Cup Series between um, all four drivers. Um, just tell us a little bit of what it, what this season has felt like from your position and um, how you guys plan to uh, approach this weekend in Phoenix. Yeah, first of all, um, the season, you know, to this point has been, uh, you know, one of our best on record. And we're obviously very proud of the accomplishments of, of the organization, you know, as a whole. But but also, I think one of the things we're most proud of is, is you know, when you look at us as a group and, and what our four teams have been able to accomplish um, together, you know, as, as an organization, that's, that's one of the biggest things that we thrive for. Um, you know, it's the start of any season, but but this year in particular, as we've made some different moves um, within the company over the last couple of years and kind of changed the way we do some things work-wise in the shop, it was uh, very important for us to not only improve our performance as a company, but, but overall have all four of our teams uh, working and collaborating very closely together. Uh, to try to to try to achieve uh, success like this, it, it's really been very broad across the company. So that, that's one of the things you know we're the most proud of in terms of 2021. And I think you know as as we approach um, Phoenix this weekend, um, certainly every team's goal when when they start the season is to be able to um, you know get to Phoenix and and have a chance. And um, you know for us um, to get to Phoenix and have a chance with two cars, uh, just Further puts a staple, you know, on the on the success of our of our season. Certainly, the the perfect season would be a, to send all four of them um, to Phoenix and and have all four of them competing for a championship because we feel that they're all that they're all worthy. And I, I think we've shown that in in recent weeks, uh, you know, whether it be road course or or intermediate or you know whatever track that's been on, we've had uh, we've had success really in, in good performance from all four of our race teams. So we'll just look to continue that on uh, through this weekend in Phoenix and obviously a huge effort going into the, the cars going into Phoenix here in the next couple of days. We've got to load up pretty quick and, and get out of here sometime late, late Tuesday night. But um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. All right, and one final question is related to the Chevrolet winning the Manufacturers Championship. Um, what does that mean? For Hendrick Motorsports to be able to, you know, help that become a rea uh, become a reality for Chevrolet this season. Yeah, certainly. So, um, obviously, very very proud of our heritage and our history with Chevrolet, and our relationship there. Um, you know, obviously goes, uh, you know, even outside of racing and, and Mr. Hendrick's um, involvement in, in car dealerships. But really, from from our perspective, to represent that brand and uh, that company. Uh, the way that the way that we have this year and be able to contribute significantly to that manufacturer's championship and help them win their 40th uh, manu manufacturer's championship. We're, we're very proud of that. Obviously, very proud to have them as as, uh, you know, one of our partners and, and a key technical partner for us and uh, just uh, a tremendous uh, amount uh, put into this and, and through uh, Chevrolet in, in the recent years, of course, with the 2020 Camaro that uh, we've been racing here recent and, uh, you know, of course, the recent announcements uh, by Chevrolet, um, Mr. Royce and Mr. Campbell and, and everyone there with a huge commitment um, real close to our property here with a 100,000 plus square foot building that will be their new uh, technical center here, um, hopefully online here later this summer. Um, so, you know, obviously to be involved uh, with them and represent them that way and, and, and for us to have a, a big part in bringing them that uh, manufacturer's championship for 2021 is very important, very special to us. And, and uh, of course, we'd like to say thank you to them for all their support, Mr. Royce and, and Mr. Campbell and Eric Warren and that whole group on, on what they do for us to uh, make it possible for us to go to Phoenix. All right, we will now go to questions. We'll get as many questions as we can in the time that we have. And to kick us off, we're going to go to Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Hey, Jeff, appreciate the time. A couple of questions from me. What was it uh, about the Cliff, what was it about Cliff Daniels and Kyle Larson that you thought what was going to work and why you paired them together? I think, I think it's interesting. Um, 
you know, Cliff has been a guy here who obviously, um, you know, through his, his career came up as a, uh, through an engineering role, uh, a lead engineer on a race team through Chad. And, and uh, you know, Cliff carries a lot of those same attributes of Chad. I have a lot of respect for you know, everything that Chad's done for this company as a crew chief. And, and then now, um, you know, serving our role of vice president of competition. Um, but, but Cliff, uh, his unique uh, personality and, and management style, very detailed, very engineering driven uh, person, holds his people very accountable for their positions, um, demands the best from them and, and receives that from them out of respect, which, which is uh, a very unique talent um, from a leader. Um, not only within our companies, but, but all companies. And, um, you know, I think when we looked at uh, bringing Kyle into our organization, uh, we looked at, at the youth side and we looked at something that was new for us and, and uh, certainly Cliff in that role and, and wanting to, you know, kind of take that 48 team and, and, and build a new team uh, around Cliff. We supported him in that, getting the right players in place for him. And then obviously you take the talent of a, of a Kyle Larson and put it in there with that youth and, and kind of that newness and what Cliff was trying to build there. Um, it just worked. I mean, it, it, it works great. And in a ton of respect uh, for those two individuals between each other and a uh, ton of admiration from, from Kyle towards Cliff and, and what Cliff uh, not only has accomplished, but the way he conducts himself and the way he runs his race team and the way his team members respond to him. What was the point this season when you knew that this pairing was going to be what they ended up becoming and that, you know, the, the, the really the, the, the sky is the limit. You know, I think obviously they came out of the gate, you know, pretty quick there with, with the win at Las Vegas. But you know, I, I think when you, you started to get through the year and, and you could just really start to see um, as the year went kind of the confidence and the trust in each other, uh, build there, particularly through the, the early part of uh, the summer, um, I think is really when I noticed it in, in some of our post-race competition meetings that, that um, Kyle was, was completely bought into to Cliff and his, his concepts and his beliefs and, and really the two of them begin. You could, you'd start to see a confidence in each other um, as, as they begin to build and kind of roll through the summer um, was really would be my observation of that. Uh, and last one for me, going into this year, what would have constituted a successful season for them, in your opinion? Well, I think, um, you know, it's, if, if you look at uh, probably the history uh, of our company, certainly with, with any of our race teams, you know, a multi-win season uh, would be a success. Um, I don't think we ever, ever dreamed of, of sitting here with 16 points wins. Uh, right now in, in 2021, uh, I would have to say that, that, you know, if you were to tell them ahead of time they were going to win three to five races uh, as a duo, they would be uh, pretty satisfied with that, right? So to be sitting where they currently are today and, and headed into Phoenix with the chance to win their first championship together is, um, you know, obviously it's it's been an amazing year. And, and hey, look, if we're, we're going to go obviously to Phoenix and, and do our very best and, and we're headed there to win a championship, but uh, when we walk away there, there on Sunday night, whatever those results are, I'm, I'm so proud of, of both of them uh, for the way they've come together and what they've accomplished this year. It's just been truly amazing. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Bob Puckers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on those a little bit. Uh, I, how, does, how does that team go from not winning a race with Jimmy Johnson to nine wins with Kyle Larson? I, I think, Bob, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot that, um, you know, went on, on behind the scenes there. And, and, and I think, you know, in, in, in fairness to, to Jimmy, I'm not sure we had everything put together there um, at that particular time. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to make all those things work. I think, obviously, Cliff um, had the advantage of, of kind of being with his group of guys and, and, and being with Jimmy and kind of getting that race team formed and, and, and getting it, you know, kind of going to his standards. And, and you know, he still continues to, to tweak and, and work on it today. But, um, you know, certainly nothing can be taken away from, from uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson, you know, our seven-time champion and everything he, he did for our company. I, I think um, I, I would have to look back on it on our end 
and uh, say, you know, we, we just didn't have things quite together there like, like we should have for, for Jimmy in his final year there. Um, so um, that, that, that would be my take on it. And Cliff said that he constantly thought that he might not get a chance to work with another driver after not winning with Jimmy. Did you ever consider that maybe he just, for, for whatever reason, just wasn't going to be the right guy? No, I, I don't think so, Bob. I think, um, you know, we, we talked about it, um, you know, for quite a while. We, we had um, several of us, you know, in, involved in that decision. Um, you know, Mr. Hendrick, of course, and Marshall and Jeff Gordon and myself. And, and um, you know, we, there was just a uh, kind of an aura and a persona there about Cliff that uh, you kind of know when someone is, you know, kind of your people, so to speak. And, and obviously Cliff had spent a lot of time here and, and come up through our system. And uh, we, we had a lot of belief in him and we had a lot of confidence in him and we were willing to stand by him for, for quite some time and, and make sure that we were giving him the tools and the resources and the people um, and, and getting that all in place. And, and uh, you know, when, once we did that and, and got, you know, again, got the right things behind him and then, you know, insert Kyle Larson and, um, you know, you got some pretty good success there in their first year together. Okay, our next question is going to come from Taryn Wack. Go ahead, Taryn. Hi there. I just have one for you. Um, how has the addition of Chad Knauss to the competition team helped Hendrick Motorsports? And what does he bring that may be new or different there? Um, yeah, so obviously Chad, you know, brings many, many, many years, um, you know, the obvious things on top of a pit box and, and uh but I think one of the most most important things that, that I enjoy about work, uh, working with Chad is just his passion and his racer mentality. Um, you know, I, I think for many of us that have that have been here many years, and, and Chad and I have worked here a long, long time together. Um, you know, a couple of things. First of all, um, there's a tremendous amount of trust and, and respect. Um, you know, between the two of us, uh, kind of in senior competition um, level positions here at the company. Um, I think we always feel like we have each other's back. Um, we work well in to, uh, together in the fact that, that we like to think progressive and aggressively. Uh, we, we both like to push people um, in, in our different departments. And, um, you know, again, he's, he's got a tremendous passion and, and he bleeds that passion out into the shop. And the folks that he works with and the folks that he touches, um, he pushes them every day to be better. And subsequently, that pushes our, our race cars to be better, whether, whether it's whether it's physically putting a vehicle together or some of our more technical folks uh, with, within our engineering groups and in different areas of our company. He's kind of touching all of those things uh, kind of at, at his level and, and, and putting um, a, a passion into those folks, so to speak, to, uh, to succeed and, and, and be better. So it, it, it's been, it's been great. I mean, obviously, um, you know, he, he's done a great job and, and I think our, our, our record speaks for that, but, you know, away from the records and away from the stats and, and the numbers, um, um, I've seen the kind of things that Chad's been doing behind the scenes and, and, and supportive him. And he comes to me about things and we consult each other and, um, you know, offer each, offer each other some guidance and, and confidence in each other in the direction we're going. And then a follow-up to that. I know I only said one, but um, you mentioned the record. How much do you think Chad and being a part of the competition team now has played a part in that, in the success this season? Yeah, I, I think it certainly has had an impact, you know, um, without question. I don't know how to you know, put a specific mm -hmm. number on it. I, I think, um, you know, if you look back towards the end of 2020, I think really as a company, we, we started to hit on some things that are um, late summer um, for our company and started uh, bringing some improved performance um, through the summer and, and uh, through the playoffs, you know, that ultimately culminated in a championship last year with Allen and Chase and the number nine Napa team. And um, so I, th I think we had some, well, I know we had some things going there last year and, um, you know, the addition of Chad and in 2022, obviously, we were just able to take a lot of those things and, and keep going with them and, and take them to another level. So I'm not sure how to, you know, assign a specific mm -hmm. win number or how many wins, you know, would we or would we not have been without Chad? I, I just know that, that, you know, Mr. Hendrick will talk to us and preach to us about that two things within our company. It's about your people and it's about your communication. Um, and, and I think 
in both of those areas, we made an improvement to our company by putting Chad in that position. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, our next question is gonna come from Jenna Farrar. Go ahead, Jenna. Thanks, hey Jeff. Um, hey, Jeff. I, I, I'm curious, you know, um, you brought in a new driver this year and he started to win everything and win everything on the team that's got the reigning champion. Um, did that ever create any sort of issues in, in either competition meetings or elsewhere? Um, I think Jenna, it's, you know, obviously, um, you know, success is, is very motivating and whether that's coming from, um, you know, whatever team that's coming from, I think if we've put the right environment together within our company, and we've done a good job at promoting all four of our teams or all four of our drivers and all four of our crew chiefs. And we've done a good job of giving them all the technical tools they need um, to go out and run well. The hope is that all four of those, you know, would feed off of each other and that certainly, um, you know, a, a certain percentage greater of success in one of the teams does not become a distractant uh, or a hindrance um, to the other team. And I think the unique thing about the environment that Mr. Hendrick breeds here within this company is that it has truly been something that each one of our teams um, has, has fed off of actually and, and the success of, of Kyle and, and Cliff and, and that number five team it has only enabled our other teams you know, to rise and, and Chase is, uh, and, and Alan both are, are both very complimentary about the job that that Kyle and, and Cliff have done uh, with their race team in their season. But, um, you know, at the same point in time, they, they remain focused and in, engaged on, on uh, you know, race wins for themselves. And I, I certainly think there's there's plenty of situations we could go back to with with the nine where, you know, they were, they were very close to, to having, you know, many more wins uh, notched up for the season and, and they're focused forward now on Phoenix. And uh, we just ended up with a great competition meeting here about two hours ago talking about Phoenix in length. And, and uh, so I, I, I feel like, um, you know, everything that, that, um, that um, Chase talked about today, Alan talked about today and, and uh, Cliff and Kyle, we, we were very engaged with each other and, and uh, looking forward to going. Ultimately, we'd like to be racing each other uh, in the closing laps to Phoenix. That's our goal. Was that an in-person uh, competition meeting? What's that? Was that an in-person competition meeting? It, it was, Jenna. Yep. Everybody was here. Okay. Everybody, all four teams? All four teams, all four drivers. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, lastly, we get you today, we get Mr. H tomorrow. So I figured I'd um, let you guys both speak on Alex Bowman. I, I imagine you guys like him. Um, is he a hack? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Alex has done a great job for us. I mean, he's, um, he's in the midst of a, a four win season and got a chance in Phoenix to make it a fifth win. And, uh, you know, by any stature in this sport, by any race team, um, you know, whether you're in the championship four or not, we, we are super proud of what Greg and Alex have done this year. Um, you know, certainly Denny is a, a tremendous talent in this sport and uh, obviously headed off to, uh, to compete for a championship um, in Homestead. And, and that, you know, that speaks for itself. Um, you know, I, I think Alex will tell you he had, he had no intent for what to happen yesterday happened. Um, there were a couple situations earlier when those two were racing each other where, you know, um, he made the right decision and, and um, you know, they're, they're in the closing laps. It, it was something similar that, that we've seen before there um, in the closing laps um, happen and, and change the outcome of, of someone's race. And, and it's happened to us. We've been on the receiving end of that before. So, um, you know. We'll go forward. Both of those guys are extremely talented. And, and uh, you know, to answer your question, no, Alex is not a hack. He's a tremendous talent in, in this sport and, and has done a lot for our company and Ally and Chevrolet. And, uh, yeah, we, we look forward to seeing, seeing their next race in, in Phoenix. Thanks, Jeff. I figured he wasn't a hack considering you guys keep re-signing him. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good week. All right. We're going to continue with questions. Our next question will go to Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you, and thanks for joining us today, Jeff. You're an engine guy, that's your background. How much did it help Hendricks turn around to do the combo engine deal with the ECR engines and over time? I mean, we, we've really seen the performance pick up in the last year. 
I think the um, <clears throat> to directly relate that um, to Foreman's, I think most crew chiefs will will gladly tell you that if you're going faster down the straightaway, they'll they'll take that any any day and time. So um, we continuously work on that. I think in specifics to the relationship, um, you know, without question, um, combining the development efforts of um, the ECR and the HMS engine programs, and really. St- start to focus, um, you know, our time, our money, um, our efforts uh, into really some specific areas has had a tremendous impact um, on the performance. And, and I commend, you know, all the key players involved in, in both of those relationships for, for how well um, that has worked and, and how well they've engaged with each other. And, and uh, you know, we, we've got some great things that we're looking at going forward. I really think we've just really kind of touch the tip of the iceberg there, so to speak, where we've, uh, we've got some really good things in, in the future that, that we're looking forward to. And, you know, I, I also, there's, there's a third party there and that's Chevrolet. And, um, you know, this is something that, that Chevrolet has pushed and has wanted for some time. And, uh, with along with myself and, and, uh, Richie Gilmore, we've talked about it together for some time and, and how we would do this and how we could make this work. And, uh, but, but I really give uh, Chevrolet, a, you know, a lot of credit for, um, you know, getting us together and say, hey, folks, you know, we, we need to be better as an OEM and uh, we want to be the best we can be as an OEM. And we've got two companies here with a tremendous amount of talent and a tremendous amount of money and technical tools that they're putting into the development uh, for Chevrolet NASCAR, uh, particularly on the powertrain side. And, and how can we get that together? and uh, reap the rewards of, of those resources and, and all those technical tools. And, and Mr. I use a quote from Mr. Hendrick. He said, if you can get all of the smart people in one room together and get them talking and communicating, um, you'll be better for that. And, and I think that's uh, what we've started to realize and uh, we'll continue to work on going forward. And to kind of follow up on Jenna's hat question, you think there's a little professional jealousy going on between veterans like Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin when you got the youngest and, you know, brightest bulbs in the room, you know, the, as far as talent goes, um, you know, brightest future, I I guess I should say, um, a little professional jealousy going on that your guys are continuing to become targets for, uh, some of the veterans in the sport. I, I think, um, you know, first, you know, I would tell you that I have a tremendous amount of, of respect for, um, you know, the talent of both Denny and Kevin uh, was fortunate enough to be, you know, close to Kevin and, and, and that uh, Rodney and that Stuart Haas team. We were fortunate enough engine wise to win a championship with them. Uh, so I, I've got a ton of respect um, for, for Kevin and, and never had the opportunity to work with, with Denny, but his, his record and on the track uh, speaks for itself um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, what he's capable of. I'm not sure how they do or, you know, don't feel about um, our driver lineup and and the youth there. I know here um, at Hendrick Motorsports, we're extremely happy, uh, not only about the youthful aspect of it, but about the talent and and maybe more importantly, the camaraderie that we have going between those four guys. Um, uh, I mentioned a while ago, our competition meeting and and those have grown into this um, open collaboration and communication session for not only our crew chiefs and our technical leaders, but also our driver uh, drivers to hear the four of them um, sitting there across from each other and talking in, uh, to each other in, in the, at the level that they are. We've, we've never had that uh, before at Hendrick Motorsports. So we're, we're really proud of that and, and we can want to continue to grow and, and nurture that environment. And I'm sure um, that, you know, there will continue to, you know, be comments about, you know, that youth and that inexperience. In, in but, but I think all those guys, whether it be Denny or Kevin, whoever that is, have, have gone through growing phases where they have done things or made mistakes on, on the track or whatever that, that's caused them ultimately to be better race drivers and be the, the champions and professionals they are today. Appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it. All right. Our next session will go to Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you, Amanda. Hi, Jeff. Um, I don't know if you're listening in when Wally was on, but he gives Hendrick Motorsports the nod. He says you guys are the favorites because obviously you all have been the fastest all year long. So I wanted you to handicap the chances for Hendrick this week. Obviously, you're with two cars, and especially when it comes to the 750 package and maybe the confidence in that. 
Yeah, I think um, first in terms of, you know, Wally's comment, um, I, have a, I have a ton of respect for, for Wally and, and what that whole Joe Gibbs racing group has been able to do over there through the years. So um, as far as, um, you know, us going in with the advantage, I, personally, I don't, I certainly don't see it that way. I mean, there may be statistically, you, you could make that argument, but uh, from ourselves and, and how we're approaching it, I mean, we're going out there to race uh, with Joe Gibbs Racing, um, you know, one of the best teams in, in the history of this sport and uh, certainly two drivers and, and uh, race teams and crew chiefs, um, you know, that, that we could compete against today. So, um, you know, our approach is, is not having the advantage. Our, our approach is, is to go into Phoenix, uh, keep our focus on, on being better than, than we were in Martinsville and, and being better than we were at our last mile uh, track, so to speak, and, and focus on our race teams and, and uh, focus on our pit stops and, and just making sure that we go in and execute and, and check all the boxes um, on our end that, that we're supposed to do. And, and so many times as we've witnessed before through the years in, in these championship races that, you know, you, you, you get there and, and you have the performance or you've had a dominant year. And, and, but, but when it's time to put everything on the line, there's some detail that, that was missed there um, in, in some part of the day for you. So this week, we're going to going to really take our time and, and make sure that we've got all those boxes checked, uh, that we're going in prepared, that we've got folks' mind in the, in the right spot. Uh, our pit crews, we're, we're beyond proud of, of, of what our pit crews have accomplished this year. We're sitting there overall with uh, the five team being, being, you know, first with, in terms of the average stop time. And I think the nine team is third. So we're, we're, we're really confident in those guys, making sure they've got their mind in, in the right spot. And, and then, you know, we got to go out and execute. And, and we know there's so many things that can happen with tires or cautions falling at the wrong time that can completely just change the, uh, the outcome of that race. So we're, we're going to, we're going to take it one practice session at a time there. We're, we're uh, I think, fortunate enough to have a little track time there on Friday. Uh, we're looking forward to that and then getting on the track Saturday to qualify. And then uh, hey, Sunday, we're going to come back in there and uh, put all on the line and do the very best we can. And hopefully we've taken all of our experiences and, and things we've done good or bad from the season. And we put all that together and, and we're as prepared as we possibly can be for Sunday. And lastly, looking a year ago, obviously Hendrick walked away with the championship with Chase, but with so much that's been made about the overall performance this year across the board for all four teams, and again, qualifying two for the final four this weekend, is it safe to say that Hendrick Motorsports is back? Are you guys back where you where you should be? Is it Are you guys back amongst the contenders? I think from our perspective, um, that somebody asked me that question um, late last year after the championship, and I, I, I think back for us is consistency and consistently being at the front on a weekly basis and uh, winning races uh, and competing for championships. And, and certainly if we can go out there this weekend and uh, win a consecutive championship, uh, second consecutive championship for Mr. Hendrick and, and our organization, I don't know that we like to use the word, you know, back around here because that's, um, I, I don't see us you know, resting on that, but, but certainly by, by our standards, um, the consistency and winning and the consistency of performing a, at a high level is, is something that we would consider back where we need to be, back where we're expected, where Mr. Hendrick expects us to be as a company. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to wrap with one final question from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Thanks. Uh, hey, Jeff. So we're, we're, we're now on the eve of the, you know, the full transfer from the current gen car over to the next gen car i'm curious as far as like infrastructure wise and personnel wise what has the, the switch over looked like so far for your team and what, what will how will hendrick look different be different as an organization uh as far as personnel and structure in 20, 2022 compared to right now yeah i think that's a that's a great question um and a great um point is that um you know i'm not sure that you know a lot of folks realize you know what not only hms and joe gibbs racing are going through right now in terms of preparing to go to phoenix to run for a championship 
but in the background and, and you know, not far from where these uh, two teams on our side are preparing cars to go uh, run for a championship at Phoenix, there's a whole group of people um, not too far away that, that's working on 2022 and, uh, and the next gen car and getting ready for an upcoming test here in Charlotte. And, um, you know, it, it's quite an interesting time to, to because parts and pieces uh, for the current Gen 6 car um, have already started uh, leaving our shops and going into crates and going into boxes and already started going to warehouses. We're already starting to make room for the parts and pieces that, that what we will be racing with in the future. So, um, you know, I, th I think that's a great uh, perspective um, to talk about because it is, it is a, a time when you're, you're trying to balance two things here. You're trying to go win a championship in, in uh, the car in the current configuration, which you raced with for many, many years. And then the other time we're, we're trying to get ready for our future and, and, and what that holds. So um, we're fortunate enough um, here at Hendrick Motorsports, as I'm sure a lot of race teams are, to be able to have the resources um, to dedicate a, a pretty large group of folks to, to getting that car up and going. There's a lot of things that, that go on in the background versus just, you know, buying a car and putting it together and going racing. And there's tooling and fixtures and how you hold the car and, and how you hold the parts and pieces in the car. And, you know, there's an underwing now under tray under the car that that's, you know, large in size. And how do you roll that around the shop? And that's just a few of the many, many, many things that will be different um, around here in the future. So um, we're trying to prepare. We're trying to do the best we can for all that. And at the same point in time, we're trying to, uh, through these upcoming tests through the winter, we're trying to give each one of our race teams a chance to go to the track and be around the car and use the car and, you know, some things on the pit box will need to be different the way you, you know, jack the car up, the way you, you know, the car is, is um, held up in the air, the way the car comes apart. If you wreck the car or, or, you know, have some sort of significant work to do on the car, the track, it's, it's all different and all something that, uh, you know, none of us have, have ever experienced before. So yeah, there's, there's kind of two things um, going on there right now. I think that's a really good question. So do, do are you expecting any significant reduction in, in crew members or staff with, under the next-gen car? And if there is someone who th feels like their job might be made obsolete by the next-gen car, what, what's something you would want to, you know, convey to them or let them know? Uh, yeah, no, we're not, uh, we're not currently looking at any um, significant um, headcount reductions. Uh, we will, without question, have a lot of folks that, that we're retasking and repurposing towards um, some different initiatives here around the campus. And uh, really, from our perspective, we want to go race this car for a year, and we really want to understand how to race this car um, for a year before we make any decisions like that. So we're, we're looking forward to, to, to keeping the the great technical group that, that we have here and then the great group of, of mechanics that, that we have here working on these cars. Will, will some people be doing the exact same thing they did this year? No, but um, we're, we're creating opportunities within other areas of this car uh, where we think we need to be strong and where we think we need some attention. And then, uh, and then let's just go race it. Let's understand what it takes to turn this car around between races, understand what it takes to race on the racetrack, I don't think the look that you see at the track in terms of team and personnel and the number of, of people, um, early conversations there with NASCAR, I, I think will be, be very close to the same amount of people there at, at the track. So that's our stance going forward. Thank you. All right, Jeff, thank you so much for joining uh, us. We know that your job um, is a busy one, especially on a Monday before um, the championship for race begins. So thank you for giving us a full 30 minutes. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.